Hello, um, welcome back. We're, we just finished up a unit on how to integrate, um, uh, techniques of integration. So we could um, find a lot of antiderivatives we didn't know how to find before. Um, now we want to turn around and start applying that knowledge once again. So uh, we have a new topic that we're going to look at, but before we do that, let's review uh, the things that we have already um, used integration to do. Okay, so you hopefully recall that our, our first use of integration was to literally add up areas. Oh, let me switch to my pen here. Uh, so we might have an x-axis and a y-axis, and we would have some function. Um, maybe it does something like that. And we would use integration if we wanted to find the area between um, x equals a and x equals b. Um, we could go ahead and do that. Um, let me put a red pencil in here. Um, we would start to add up little rectangles of area. And we were literally taking heights times widths in order to add up these areas. We could do left sums, right sums, trapezoidal sums, midpoint sums, um, but we literally found an area um, by taking a height times a width. Yeah, so that was useful um, for calculating areas. Um, and often we will want to know the area under the curve. Um, so let me write area. That was the first thing we did. Um, the next thing we did was we use this in a more abstract sense. So if I had a curve that was, uh, let me switch back to my pen, um, that looks something, uh, we can do something like this. But this curve might um, represent something, okay? So for instance, um, this curve might be a velocity in meters per second. And on this axis, we might have time in seconds, all right? So once again, and maybe, uh, oh, let me continue my curve all the way to time zero. Usually when we're doing physics, we'll start at time zero. Uh, so let me switch over to, my pencil and let's fill in, you know, here's a rectangle. I'm making it a large rectangle, um, but its height is a velocity in meters per second. Right, I need to write the word in if I'm going to put that in parentheses. And then its width equals a time in seconds. So when we multiply those out, the area, which is the product of those two things, is equal to a change in position, which would be in meters. So that would be useful um, if we were to do that. And you'll notice what we're doing is we're pretending that we have a constant velocity for a certain amount of time. And you all know your uh, distance rate time formula. So we can really say um, that the change in x is equal to the velocity over an interval um, times the change in time and that little bit of that rectangle represents an area so then we add on another one it looks like we went a little bit further this time and a little bit further and we keep going these blocks are getting bigger and bigger so each time increment we're adding more position to where we were um, but each one of those blocks represents a position Okay, so key ideas, uh, let me uh, switch colors here to something interesting. Okay, so this is a rate of change. Okay, velocity is a rate of change of position. So if we know how fast the position is changing, we can compute the change, the total change in position from it. Another quick physics example, if instead of position versus time, um, if this had been, I'm sorry, velocity versus time, if this was acceleration in meters per second squared, let's have a graph. Uh, oh, and this is time in seconds. Uh, we'll have a graph this time that goes like this. All right. So we have a lot of acceleration at the beginning, but it's dropping off. 
Um, so then what does each rectangle represent? Uh, let's do right sums this time. Okay, so what would this rectangle um, represent? Okay, if I were to fill this in, what is that area? Okay, that area is an acceleration times a time. And hopefully you remember with physics that um, if you were to take acceleration times a time interval, that will give you a change in velocity. So acceleration is the rate of change in velocity. It tells you exactly how fast the velocity is changing. So if we integrate it over time, um, then we will in fact get the change in velocity. So if we finish the rectangles each time we're going, we're speeding up, but we're speeding up by a little bit less each time. Um, if the curve went below the x-axis, we'd be slowing down. Right, so we can add up how much our velocity changes. So we have a cumulative change in velocity. Uh, so hopefully you're comfortable with that. Then we can keep on going here. We created very interesting things like shapes like this, and we would spin the region around the axis. Okay, and we saw that if we spun a rectangle around the axis, this one would make a nice little disc. And we could fill up this region with disks, and each one of these disks was a volume element. All right, so we created delta V is equal to pi r squared delta x. But when you sum up your delta Vs, you get a total volume. So once again, we're adding something up. And if we turn that into an integral, we can get exactly how much volume uh, we'll have when we rotate this whole object around. Um, I'm sorry, when we take this whole region, I should say, and rotate it around, we can calculate the total volume of rotation by turning our little volume elements into an integration of infinitely small volume elements. All right, then we did crazy things. Um, remember, we turned these into things like first moments. And if we totaled up our first moments, we could use that to find the center of mass. Okay, so um, if we combine that with the idea of volume or area, um, we could calculate center of masses by adding up first moments. All right, what we want to do now is add one more idea, um, one more sort of geometric application, and that is to find curve lengths. Okay, so the new idea is if, you know, if I have a curve, let's just do something like that, um, it has a length to it. All right, now if I want to find the length, what we're going to start by doing is considering line segments. So we're going to make up our curve out of line segments. And hopefully you remember how to calculate the length of a line between two points. We'll review that quickly in the next video. Um, but the combined total length of those red segments um, is approximately the length of the curve. It's probably because of the curviness of it, it's probably a little bit short. Um, but if we were to break that into more and more line segments, we will, in fact, be able to approach uh, the value of the length of the curve. And we can use calculus to make that into an infinite number of line segments and find the actual length of the curve.